Hello, and thank you for your interest in audio precision. While there are hundreds of audio measurements that are appropriate for any particular device, there are some basic measurements that are relevant to nearly all audio devices. This video looks at frequency response. Frequency response measures the output level of a device at different frequencies. Results are typically displayed in a graph showing level versus frequency. Usually, we're looking to see if the response is flat. In other words, that the device responds with the same level across its bandwidth. Of course, sometimes we are looking for a characteristic curve that is not flat. For example, we might be looking at the maximum amplitude of an equalizer section, or we could be confirming that a weighting filter has been properly implemented. Because frequency response is essentially just a series of level measurements made at different frequencies, the units are the same as level. Volts RMS, dBV, and dBU are the most common. A quick note about how we measure frequency response with the APX. Traditional analyzers measure frequency response by using a test signal that has a series of tones at different frequencies. Two or three tones will give you a very basic idea of frequency response, but often 60 or more frequencies are used. Which frequencies to choose depends on what you're looking for. For a general frequency response, analyzers may use a one-third octave sweep, assigning three measurement points in each octave of the bandwidth you want to measure. There are 10 octaves between 20 Hz and 20 kHz, so at three tones per octave, a one-third octave sweep would require 31 points. One-sixth octave sweep measurements are also common. Of course, the more frequencies you use, the longer the measurement will take. A sweep with 61 one-second steps will take over a minute. To get around this speed limit, Audio Precision has added a new frequency response measurement that uses the continuous sweep method. Continuous sweep is also known as log swept sign or chirp. Instead of using a series of discrete tones, a continuous sweep signal is swept smoothly from the start frequency to the stop frequency in a short burst, providing a much more comprehensive measurement in a fraction of the time. A stepped frequency sweep is also available in APX500, or you can use a multitone, which we'll discuss in a later tutorial. Okay, so let's see the continuous sweep in action. With an APX audio analyzer, taking a frequency response measurement is easy. In this tutorial, our device under test is a small pro audio mixer. We'll do two measurements. First, we'll look at our mixer with the EQ set to flat. After that, we'll characterize the mixer's mid-band EQ section. The signal path is unbalanced to unbalanced, and we'll use the analyzer's default bandwidth of 90 kHz. To keep things simple, we'll set the level controls on the mixer to a gain of zero, often called unity gain. A quick check using the APX gain measurement will confirm that the overall gain of the mixer is just about zero. Then we click the frequency response measurement from the measurement navigator. We need to define the bandwidth of the sweep and the level we want to send to the DET. 20 Hz to 20 kHz is a common audio bandwidth and one volt RMS is a typical level. Now we just hit start and APX transforms the continuous sweep into a level versus frequency graph. This displays the DUT's output level at every frequency between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. The response looks totally flat. Let's zoom in to take a closer look. Some roll off on the high end, but it's very small. Overall, a good frequency response. We can also look at gain versus frequency. This shows us the ratio of the DUT's output level to the level applied to its input across the frequency range. Gain is typically expressed in decibels. Positive dB means the device has gain at that frequency. Negative dB means attenuation. Relative level is another level versus frequency graph, but in this case the level is plotted as a ratio to the level result at a selected frequency. This is useful to determine the extremes of a device's response in relation to a nominal frequency. First we'll choose a reference frequency. 1 kHz is the default because it's in the middle of the human hearing range. That makes 0 dB equal to whatever level is measured at 1K, and the graph shows the level at all the other frequencies in relation to that. 
deviation measures the breadth of the level deviations across the selected bandwidth. Since this mixer is pretty flat, there is not much deviation shown. As we've seen, the response of this mixer is quite flat, as it should be. So let's look at a situation where we'll see some variation, characterizing the mid-band EQ of our mixer. First, I'll turn the EQ knob on my mixer to maximum, plus 15 dB. Now let's rerun the measurements. We'll check append so we can compare the new results against the flat results. Everything else can stay the same. Then we'll put the knob to minus 15 dB and append another measurement. The EQ's center frequency is supposed to be 2.5K, so let's zoom into that part of the graph. The center frequency looks about right. The gain seems to be maxing out a little lower than the claimed 15 dB, so we might recommend that marketing restates the spec, or request that engineering take a look at the equalizer section to see why it's not reaching 15 dB. Now let's look at the width of the filter. We can use the gain view for this. We can immediately see that this EQ section is quite broad, with response extending from 60 Hz to well over 20 kHz. Using the cursors, we can find the 3 dB down points at approximately 1.4K and 5.1K. Now let's save these EQ graphs as a PDF. We've taken the frequency response of this mixer and successfully characterized the mid-band EQ section. Next up, crosstalk.